Question three will always start. How far do sources, in this case B, C and D, suggest and then there will be a statement? So what, what is it in sources B, C and D that support that statement and what is it in B, C and D that do not support that statement, that go against that statement? So do not approach this answer by saying source B says this, source C says this and source D says that. You need to approach this question by saying these are the bits in, the, in all of the sources that support the statement that it was dangerous and these are the bits in the sources that go against that statement, that contradict that statement. And then you need to make a conclusion that says how far all of the sources support the statement. Okay, so either they go uh, they go a long way to supporting the statement, or they don't go far at all to support the statement, or they go quite far to support the statement. So in this case, we have three sources. The first source is written by Dr. Blundell, who was the first person to do blood transfusions, and he says. Operations that need the transfusion of blood are probably rare. However, in some cases they are needed, otherwise the patient will die. There are also many more cases where transfusion could be used to replace large blood losses even when the patient is not, is not in danger of dying. Well, that bit contradicts the statement that it was dangerous, doesn't it? At present there is no clear evidence that transfusion has been fatal. However, this might be a possibility. Perhaps we should only use transfusion where it seems the only hope for the patient is that we throw blood into their veins. And that suggests that it is dangerous, doesn't it? Because it should only be done if it is a last resort. Sources from a short history of blood transfusion by P. Leroy, published in 2006. So this is a history book. Disagreements existed throughout the 19th century regarding the use of transfusion. Different views can be found in the records of the Medical Society of London. Many surgeons believe that transfusions were dangerous and that they have, may have caused the death of some patients on which they were used. Well, that supports the statement, doesn't it? They also claim that most of the patients who had benefited from transfusions would have recovered anyway. However, some surgeons argued strongly in favour of transfusions, noting that the dangers of blood loss were far greater than the possible danger from transfusion. Oh, that contradicts the statement, doesn't it? That it wasn't dangerous. Source D is from a speech by the work of Dr. Landsteiner, who was awarded the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1930. In 1901-3, Landsteiner pointed out that problems could occur when blood is transfused from one human to, to another. His opinions, however, received little attention until 1999. And in that year, Landsteiner classified the blood of human beings into well-known A, B, A, B and O groups. He showed that problems arise when one person is transfused with the blood of another person who has a different blood group. So that suggests that they didn't know about different blood groups, which means it was dangerous. So therefore your answer will look something like uh, some aspects of sources B, C and D do suggest that surgeons' uh, use of blood transfusion was dangerous before 1909. For example, in source B, it says that perhaps we should only use transfusion where it seems the only hope for the patient is that we throw blood into their veins, which suggests it should be used as a last resort. In source C, uh, there's a statement that says many surgeons believe the transfusions were dangerous and source D shows that they had no idea about different blood groups which could have killed people. However, there are some aspects of sources B and C which contradict this statement. In source B, Dr. Bundle, the first person to do tran blood transfusions, says that there are some cases where transfusions could be used to replace large vessels even when the patient is not in danger of dying. And in source C, it suggests that surgeons argued that um, the dangers of blood loss were far greater than the possible dangers from, from, from uh, transfusions. So therefore, in conclusion, sources B, C and D go quite far to suggest that blood transfusions were dangerous before 1909. So just to recap, your first paragraph should be the extracts from the sources that support the statement. Your second paragraph should be extracts from the sources which contradict the statement. And your conclusion should conclude how far. Does it, do they go completely? Do they go com quite far or do as a whole they not go far at all.